Hey everybody, welcome back. So we got a little day in the life stuff here today. Come down here, I've got to feed the Tegu, got to feed the Nile Monitor, and we're going to go into a little bit of the joys of keeping the big snakes and uh, kind of look at their enclosures that I just cleaned two days ago. We're going to get these guys cleaned up, get them outside and play a little bit. And got a couple things to talk about regarding um, out here in North Carolina, uh, the Raleigh committee meetings and all that stuff are, you know, firing back up again uh, in regards to the venomous snake and reptile bands and stuff out there. So we got a couple things to talk about. We're just going to have a little bit of fun, get some stuff done. So if you want to go anywhere, we'll be right back on Intrepid Exotics. Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. So my workbench here is on the other side of the reptile room. This is where I come to get all their food prepared and whatnot. So what I'm feeding these guys today is a little bit of tilapia, a little bit of chicken, and a little bit of shrimp. And they all tend to eat better than I do half the time. So this is my little Argentine black and white tegu in here. Who loves sitting around here just sleeping in the substrate all day long. Come on girl. And I know it's kind of hard to see in here. The uh... <laughs> there you are. Some dinner. There you go. No, not the fingers. These heat lamps in here just never do the video justice. It always ends up being discolored. But this is our little tagu. Now it's time to get Niles fed. Watch him charge the gate. Hey buddy. Come on. <laughs> Time to eat. <laughs> well, look at you being all cautious today. You're a good boy. Here's Monty. She's getting ready to come outside pretty soon. But two days after I cleaned her enclosure, she decided to fill her water bowl up for me now. She knows it's about time to get outside and roam. <laughs> Such a pretty girl. And this one, Mr. Apollo, decided to make a mess of his house already. Somebody decided to shed and poop. And, uh, at least these guys all did it at the same time so I can get them all in one day. What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? <laughs> now that he's shed, I'm sure he'll be really happy to get outside. And Tigger, this bonehead, came down here last night and he was laying in his water bowl. Now he's got his water bowl turned over and he's on top of it. So, <laughs> it's a never ending process with these guys. And it's really good seeing Niles starting to calm down a little bit. Yeah, you could see how he approached his food. He's a little bit on point still, but he's really starting to relax a bit couple trips outside a little bit more interaction and I think he's doing really good like I said I think by the time the summer's over with I should be able to let him come outside or come upstairs with us rather and just kind of run around I think he's uh I think he's doing pretty good ain't that right buddy <laughs> So 
So the routine that I try to keep with these guys most of the time when I've got time to do it, like today, is I'm going to get her out. I'm going to go ahead and just throw her in the bin, get her enclosure cleaned up for her, get her all squared away, and then we're going to come out of the bin, let her kind of get her bearings, and then we'll go outside and play. And I kind of do that with all of them. So. Let's see what you're going to do, girl. There you go. And you notice I don't have my hook with her. She is in straight exploration. I want to get out and run around. I want to play mode. So I'm not the least bit worried about her having a you know, food response mistake or anything. I know she doesn't want to go in the bin right now. Come on, girl. Come on. You got to go in the box for a minute. <laughs> Come on, sweetie. And again here guys, I'm getting ready to take her out of the box and get her outside for a little while. Notice how you always open it with the lid up against you like this. Hey sweetie, what are you doing? You ready to go play? Yeah, I am not worried about her one bit, but I have had some pretty, uh, pretty energetic snakes and tubs before. And if you open it up the other way, where the first thing they see is you, you might end up, end up getting yourself in trouble. Hey baby, you ready to go outside? Hmm? Ready to go stretch your legs? You're such a good girl. Such a good girl, come on. Such a good heavy girl, man. Okay. All right, so when I bring my guys outside, I try to get them pretty close to the shade. I'll set them down in the sun. More often than not, they end up running towards the shade. I think their eyes are more comfortable that way. Come on, girl. you're gonna find sometimes that your animals will maybe act a little bit differently when you've got them outside as opposed to when they're indoors and that's because their eyes they see things a little bit different when you're in the bright sunlight as opposed to being under the incandescent lights of the house and so forth And this is a really good time to, you know, really pay attention to your animals, check them over really well, you know, check them for anything that might be a problem, you know, any injuries, stuff like that. She is doing really good.
And this is pretty par for the course for her too when we come outside. She'll run around for a little while. She's all full of energy. And then it doesn't take too much longer and she's just ready to lay out here and soak up the sun and relax. Especially the bigger she gets. You know, when she was younger, she'd come out here and run around a lot more. She'd get up, climbing the trees and whatnot. Nowadays, she's good for a little while and she just want, wants to kind of come out here and lounge around. But look at this girl as she's cruising around. Just look at her eyes. You know, this is the state that you want to have your animals in. This is the state that they're in in the wild, just casually checking things out. I'm going to try to capture some of the iridescence on this girl. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And the sun hits these guys just right. move back inside and then go get these boys cleaned up and get them out here for a little while <laughs> I don't think she's ready to go in yet now we got Apollo like I said he's fresh shed he ate a week and a half two weeks ago something like that so he's all full energy now and feeling good we're gonna get him out there I'm going to get him in the bin, get his enclosure clean first. This is the wedge that I put in there to keep him from popping that door up. And he should be back to his old, normal, lovable self now. Yep. Look at him popping around that enclosure. <laughs> hey, bud. Hi. You going to come out? You gonna come out and see me? Hey, come on. And this is one of those things I wouldn't typically recommend doing your first time going into the enclosure, grabbing them like that when their face is pointed right at you. But Apollo here tends to be a pretty good boy most of the time. Don't you, bud? Why not? Get you in your bin.
All right, we're gonna get Apollo out of here now. Come on, buddy. Hey. Hello. Come on, buddy. Come on, big boy. Uh. All right. Let's get him outside. So this fella right here, of course, the last snake I had out, that was a reticulated python. She's probably 13, 14 feet now. Probably closer to 14. But this is my male Burmese. And you'll see a lot of people ask what the difference is between a Burm and a retic. And you're gonna see I am a lot less active right here with her, or with him, rather. He's just kind of latched on to me. Really slow, real easy to manage. You know, if, you, if you're somebody who's looking for a bigger snake, I'd really recommend berms. Um, <clears throat> you know, I love my retics, but, um, you know, this guy right here is really just so easy to manage. You know, <clears throat> he's not really high energy all that often, and he's really, really slow, really deliberate, and generally pretty easy to work with. You know. <laughs> Ain't that right, buddy? You know, I wouldn't trade my retakes for anything. And I wouldn't trade my berms for anything, too. But it is a nice break in between handling the two big retakes to get him out and just kind of be leisurely for a little while. <laughs> and he doesn't even look like he's in a big hurry to get down on the ground. So, I'm going to use this opportunity, too, to tell you about um and you guys probably remember the ordeal we had out here in raleigh north carolina if you're out here in north carolina uh really need to pay particular attention to this because the uh, city council is meeting again to um see if they can solidify something on the uh, venomous ban um they've got a couple different options that they can take there's some details on this um i think the u.s arc page has got it i'm going to verify that put the link down in the description for you so you can read everything yourself but they're talking about it again and there is i'm also gonna have the date down in the description because i don't remember what it is i don't want to give you bad information uh, but there is another hearing so i think it's this one's open to the public so if you guys are out here in north carolina by all means um you know, make a point of engaging with that because you know there's a lot of stuff going on in the reptile community right now uh, down in florida uh, they have got a <clears throat> a really really bad situation down there um as far as some of the laws that they're talking about and um you know we're paying attention to that we just had the tegu ban up here in north carolina and now again you know we're dealing with the situation out in raleigh uh, you know it's these little battles like this we got to be able to squash these things right off the bat because you know it's going to happen there Another city council is going to follow their lead. Another one's going to follow their lead. And before you know it, you know, there's a lot of keepers that are, you know, having to give up their animals or having euthanized or, you know, maybe getting lucky and being able to be grandfathered in like we are with the tegus with a permit or something. But nothing good ever comes up, guys. So definitely, like I said, I'll leave the link in the description and all that stuff. So uh, definitely get involved in that. And... Are you ready to get down yet? You're getting heavy. <laughs> Are you ready to get down yet? Come on. Let me get him down on the ground. So this right here is Apollo. He's a... Uh, Roughly 13 foot Burmese python, maybe 12 foot, uh, about 45 ish pounds or so. And you can see these guys are so much easier to manage than the, uh, the retics are. So much more mellow. Uh, my retic, as soon as I pick her up, man, she's wiggling and, and trying to roam around, trying to get down. Uh, this guy is so much more laid back. So, you know, if you're thinking about getting a bigger snake, and you want one that's a little bit more reasonable to, to manage, to handle, and so forth, you know, Burmese may be the way to go. 
just because of their demeanor. They're a little bit more mellow. Time to get him put away and we're gonna go get the big boy out here for a little while. All right. I'm gonna get the mail retick out of here now. Get his water bowl flipped back up and get him outside for a little while. He's all curled up on top of there. He hasn't really moved, so I don't know what frame of mind he's in. But we will see. Hey, buddy. Hey, Tig. See, and I'm just reaching in with my hand right now because I'm in a position where his head's kind of buried back there. So there's no way he could strike at me. And I would much rather my first contact with him be with my hand if I can help it. Puts him a little bit more in the frame of mind of, uh, you know, what's going on, what's getting ready to happen. Hey, I see you. Peekaboo, buddy. Come on. Come on. We're going to go outside. Come on, buddy. Come on. Okay. There you go. Good boy. Come on. Come on, babe. Come on. in there so we can get your house squared away. This is an energetic steak. You guys are gonna see me get a workout when we get him outside. So I just wheeled Tigger out here. It'd be a lot easier to just get him out of there and let him run around than it is to be bringing him outside. And he was all full of energy going in here. Let's see what he's doing now. He's a little disoriented because he was inside when I put him in the box. Now he's outside in the sunlight. So, you know, his vision, he's seeing things a little bit differently. And it's taking him just kind of a second to get his bearing and so forth. That's why I'm not reaching in there and grabbing him right away. You know, like I said, anytime you're working with these guys, you just got to be patient and give them enough time for their mind to kind of start understanding what's going on. Good now. Oh. 
love getting this guy outside you can see he's got so much energy and you're about to see why I always walk in sweating when I handle this guy out here he is such a workout look at that it's 15 16 foot of snake he's just scooting around like a little garter snake get over here and wrestle around with him a little bit I think This is the difference between handling a berm and handling a reed kick. Yeah, come on, buddy. Buddy, you coming to see me? And this energy level you see in the retakes can be so difficult to keep up with sometimes. Because <laughs> they will keep you running all over the place. So this is one thing to be said for these animals. There's no doubt in my mind that we actually have a connection with these guys. Because this is a 15, 16 foot apex predator right here. Loose in the backyard. And he just crawled up onto my shoulders for me. You know, it is really amazing. When you get this kind of relationship with these animals there's just nothing in the world like it 
all the more reason. Yeah. Somebody's trying to go back on the ground. I don't see him. Where yet? Oh. He's sneaking on me. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, man, these guys are some of the most rewarding animals in the world to work with. All right, everybody's home and clean, and I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with us for a little while today. A little bit of a day in the life type stuff. And don't forget, guys, you know, if you've got these bigger snakes, you got these bigger animals, get them outside. Spend time with them, man. Don't be afraid to just take them out of their enclosure, get them roaming around and so forth. It does a lot of good for them. And now it's time to go do maintenance on my phone because I'm running out of space. So don't forget, guys, like the videos, get subscribed to the channel, and we'll see you guys next time on Intrepid Exotics.